Hey y'all, my name is Ashton Walton and today we are doing part two or the second lesson of our Obadiah series. Uh, the title for today is Judgment Announced. Uh, last week we did just kind of an overview of the book of Obadiah, just kind of asking and answering four questions, uh, namely what was the reason for this prophecy? Who were these nations? Who is Edom? This is a prophecy to um, or a doom prophecy against Edom. Who, who is Edom and who are they in connection with Israel? Uh, were there previous conflicts be, between these nations? Um, what was, how did this book kind of uh, come about? Where, where did this feud begin? Um, and what value does this book have in the canon of Scripture? This is a prophecy to or against another nation. And why is this book important? if Israel is really the main characters all throughout Scripture, if the, the people of Israel are the ones God always promises to, to keep and maintain a remnant, why are we now looking at a prophecy against another nation? And we just see um, through this, we see that Obadiah, so Obadiah the prophet, he prophesied to Edom, which last week we saw was Esau. If you remember, Jacob and Esau uh, were brothers, and God went and fulfilled his covenant to Abram, fulfilled it through the younger, Jacob, and Esau went off and married, and his, his lineage, his, his line became the nation of Edom. So you can see where the family relationship was. Um, and Obadiah, so Obadiah is prophesying to the nation of Edom and really prophesying against them regarding the mistreatment of their brother nation Israel. And we want to see kind of what we're, our goal is, is to answer is how does God choose to deal with these unbelievers' disobedience? How is God choosing in the lives of the Edomites who sinned against their brother nation Israel? How is God choosing to deal with them? How is he choosing to uphold his covenant. So last week, um, the the title was Concerning Edom, but really just an introduction to the book. Um, we see in verse 1, it says that an envoy has been sent from among the nations saying, Arise, let us go to against her for battle. God is calling for war against Edom, and we're going to kind of see that continued tonight or uh, tonight or today, whenever you're watching that. Um, but we're going to see that as we, as we continue in this study tonight, we're going to see the judgment announced. So if you open up your Bibles to Obadiah chapter 1, um, we're going to be beginning in verse 2 tonight. And we'll, we'll start reading. Obadiah writes, Behold, I will make you small among the nations, you are greatly despised. God is speaking to this nation, and this is, the, this is the word of the Lord written down by Obadiah. But this is the word of the Lord. It is, Behold, I'll make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. This is to Edom. So let's pray, and then we'll, then we'll begin. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity we have to read and study your word together. God, tonight I pray that you would um, use this lesson to, to speak truth, to encourage and, and help strengthen others in their walk with you. God, I thank you for the things you've taught me through this lesson. And God, I pray that you would move me out of the way so that you could, you'd also be able to teach others um, through your word today. And God, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right. I will make you small among the nations. You are greatly despised. Tonight, we're main focus is we're going to be looking at four judgments. God is judging. So Edom was very prideful, and they've kind of found security in four major areas. And these are the focus of God's war on Edom. And another example of this is if you look in the book of Exodus, God brings 10 plagues. And there's significance behind those plagues. What those plagues uh, represented were the, it was attacks against the different gods of Egypt to show that 
Yahweh alone is Lord. We'll see that kind of tonight is, we'll see four major areas that Edom found their uh, security in and they became very prideful in. We're going to see that God is calling for war against this nation and that he is addressing and will be attacking these four areas. So the first one we see is we see that there's a judgment of location. Obadiah 1 verses 3 through 4 says, The arrogance of your heart has deceived you, you who live in the clefts of the rock, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who say in your heart, Who will bring me down to earth? Though you build high like the eagle, though you set your nest from among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. So a judgment of location. Edom, in verse 3, they really asked, who will bring me down? Who is going to come against me? Who will bring me down? Um, and based on their location, the Edomites were actually kind of up in the in just a higher area. They're kind of up in the mountains. Uh, there's one part where they really found security, and it was there was a city that was almost basically carved carved into the side of the mountain. Was this city, and that was uh, just a natural security. Um, the way some of the mountain peaks came up just really made it like this fortress-like solitude and security. There was an area where if an army wanted to invade, they had to go down a narrow, or up really, up a narrow one-mile path. And so to, to get to Edom to attack them was a difficult task. They found security in that. So Edom was really asking, who will bring me down? Who can bring me down? Uh, we see that, uh, verse 3, you who live in the clefts of the rocks, the, the rocks for them were, they were a fortress, and that brought about this false sense of security in their lives. And then their high places, which just made them really in, inaccessible for attack, just kind of pulled them away from enemy attack. If the enemy tried to attack them, they would have a difficult time attacking the Edomites. And this brought about a sense of pride as well. So both a false sense of security and a false sense of pride. However, they failed to remember uh, what Psalm 127 uh, verse 1 says. And that is, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor, in vain who they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city. Um, oh, that verse did not print all the way. <laughs> Psalm 127 says, Unless the Lord God guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. So unless God is there and protecting and watching over, it's all in vain. It's Unless God is with the Edomites, unless God is with them and behind them and keeping them secure, they have a false sense of security. They have this pride that will lead to their destruction. So Edom asked, who will bring me low? In verse 4, we see that from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. God will bring them back to their rightful place. Um, in the trial series, we saw that the, the brother of humble circumstances is to glory. Um, and that's a, that's a high position is to is to be in a humble position. Um, but the rich man, the rich man is to glory in his humiliation. We saw that that humility and humiliation are very similar. Humiliation, when God humiliates someone, it's bringing them back to where they should have been in the first place. But it's humiliation because it's a forced humility. God is bringing the Edomites, or he will bring the Edomites into submission. So God responds that he will bring Edom low. Next, we see that there is a judgment of wealth. Um, God, God promises and he is, God is bringing and calling for war against their location. God, God is going to attack where they're at. Now God is uh, promising attack against their possessions, their wealth. Obadiah 1, 5 through 6 says, If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how will you be 
how oh how you will be ruined would they not steal only until they had enough if grape gatherers came to you would they not leave some gleanings oh how esau will be ransacked and its hidden hidden treasures searched out just a few points about this um you notice it says if thieves came to you if robbers by night oh how you will be ruined would they not steal only until they had enough when robbers come they they don't typically rob a house completely they go in and they search for just the most valuable things just the money just just the drugs just the jewelry they they typically have a, a goal of just a small amount of items they don't come in and completely empty out a house however god contrasts that and and shows that edom will be completely drained they'll come it, this word ruined means to to be laid waste to to be cut off to cease edom will be drained completely there we see in verse 5 that um, if grape gatherers came to you would they not leave some gleanings that was if you look in leviticus 19 verses 9 through 10 you can see god set up laws uh, for the israelites to leave to not completely clear out their field but to leave some on the edges to leave some so that those who are needy, those who are poor, um, this is what Ruth, if you read the book of Ruth, that's what Ruth was doing, was gathering the gleaning, the things that were left behind. But we see that there will be nothing even left to glean from Edom. It will be completely drained. Next we see the, the third point is we see there's a judgment of their alliances judgment of their alliances. Obadiah 1, 7 says, All the men allied with you will send you forth to the border, and the men at peace with you will deceive you and overpower, uh, overpower you. They who eat your bread will set ambush for you. There is no understanding in him. That's uh, verse 1, 7. So we see that the, the covenant um, clearly in this verse the covenant and the hospitality customs are are broken uh, both of these in this culture in this time are very very important covenant relationships um, we see the uh, the sentence there they who eat your bread many times when a covenant was was established there would be a, a meal shared between covenant partners to to signify that this covenant is being established and we are now we are now uh, we have now become one in this covenant. We are now working together, seeking out the interests of the other. And we see that the, those covenants, those covenant relationships, those, ally, uh, those allies will turn against their alliance with Edom. And these nations that they were working with will now be working against Edom. We also see... Um, there's the emphasis there is no understanding in him that kind of seems random in this verse but it, kind of the point that god is making is edom is not going to see this coming they're not going to realize that their alliances are going to turn on them they're not going to realize that just like that all these friends they thought they had will suddenly be coming against them all the men allied with you will send you forth to the border this is the very thing they did to their brother Israel years uh, years before. This was back in uh, Numbers verses uh, chapter twenty verses fourteen through twenty one. Israel was seeking just to pass straight through. They said, "We will not touch anything. We won't even touch the gleaning. We won't touch the edge of your field. We just want to walk through." And they refused them passage. They said, "If you enter our land, we will come against you." God's addressing that. All the men allied with you will send you forth to the border. All the men at peace with you will deceive you and overpower, and overpower you. They'll be deceived and Edom will not see this coming. So there's a judgment of alliances. Last week, the fourth judgment, there is a judgment of reputation. A judgment of reputation. What does that mean? 
Um, Obadiah 1, 8 and 9 says, Will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy the wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountain of Esau? Then your mighty men will be dismayed, O Temen, so that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter. Who are these wise men? The wise men from Edom, that doesn't really seem that important at first glance. And that seems like something you can almost just skip over, pass over. Um, but actually, in this day, Edom's wise men held a high reputation. Um, if you look on the map, most of y'all's Bibles have maps in the very back. And if you look at Edom, it's um, kind of south. It's in the south near, kind of near the land of Judah. It's actually south of Judah. Under, under Moab, so if you look, if you find the Dead Sea directly below and a little to the right, or I guess a little to the east, is Edom. Along where Edom was, uh, there's a highway, there's a main highway that passes north through Edom uh, to connect. It's a trade route and uh, a route for traveling. It's called the King's Highway. Now, the King's Highway gave access and provided worldwide intellectual stimulation for this nation. Edom's wise men were kind of well world-renowned wise men. They were known worldwide, or at least what was the world at this, in this day and age. They had access to, to the wisdom of the world, and they had access in an avenue to, to spread that wisdom. Um, and so they were very, very well known. In fact, one of Job's friends, if you read um, Job 2.11, Eliphaz was a Temanite. And we see that O Temen um, in verse 9, O Temen, or your mighty men will be dismayed, O Temen. That is a city of Edom. And so to see that even in Job, um, in Job's day, the Edomites were, were seen as Job listened to this man's counsel later on realized that it was not wise counsel. It, it did not match God's word, but according to the world, according to the theology of the day, that was wisdom. So these world-renowned wise men of Edom who held a high reputation would be destroyed. The understanding, um, the, the wisdom from the mountain of Esau, that's, that's Edom. It's in the mountain land. It's, Esau is kind of... Um, you can use Esau or Edom to talk about the same thing, will be destroyed so that everyone will be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter. All right, so kind of in conclusion today, we see that the fullness of the incoming judgment, we see um, from the second point, is that this will be a complete judgment. God's judgment on Edom is complete. But we see that the fullness of the incoming judgment shows that how God views sin against his covenant partner, Israel. God keeps his promise to Abram um, in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, through the proclamation of the judgment. So God is proclaiming judgment on this nation of Edom, and that is a fulfillment of his promise years before to his covenant partner, Abram. And that covenant partner with Abram uh, partnership with Abram, who later became known as Abraham, was carried on through his son Isaac, through Jacob, to Jacob's 12 sons who became the 12 tribes of Israel. And that carried on all the way through all of their descendants. This nation of Israel is part of this covenant promise with Abram that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. What Edom did, this, this taking advantage, they took advantage of Israel during a Philistine and Arabian attack. And we'll actually kind of see next, in the next lesson, we'll see what, what the reason, we'll kind of see some more of the details of what they did. Um, the next lesson, we're actually going to be looking at the four sins of Edom. But we see that God keeps his promise to Abram through the proclamation of the judgment. And we see that this is not just 
a little slap on the wrist, we see it's a full and complete judgment. So that's kind of, uh, that's my conclusion for you guys. That's kind of my ending. Um, just some questions though that I hope you ponder. I hope you um, will think about if you watch this lesson with somebody, maybe answer the questions for each other. Um, but the question, the first question, and they'll be down in the description as well. Uh, what areas of your life do you find security in apart from God? So what areas of your life do you find security in apart from God? Second question is, how can you come to better trust God? Third question is, what areas of your life are filled with pride? And number four, what are ways you can avoid finding comfort as the Edomites did? What I mean by that is they found comfort in four, four main areas. They found comfort in their location, in the, in the safety and security of the rocks of this, of this natural fortress. And they found security in their wealth. They found security in their alliances, in their partnerships with other nations. And they found security in their reputation, in their, the wise men of Edom who were world-renowned and their mighty men. They found security in those four areas. So what ways can you avoid finding comfort, finding security as the Edomites did? Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this day. Again, God, we thank you for the opportunity to, to study your word, read your word. And God, I pray that at least one person just would have been able to be encouraged by this lesson, God. I, I pray that you would be helping others to, be, uh, to learn things as I've been learning in this, um, in this study, God. I pray that you would Help just use the, these, not for my glory, but God, for yours, and that you would use this lesson to strengthen and help encourage the body of Christ. Father, we pray for, um, for the Steely family, for the husband's salvation. God, we pray that they would just be able to, to continue to just find a place to live. God, I pray for Mr. Steely's work hours that you would just help him to, to get those more consistently so that he could uh, provide for his family. Father, we pray for Julie, whose mom has Parkinson's. God, we pray that you would strengthen um, her parents as she, is, as she and her family are dealing with that. Um, Father, we pray for those who deal with difficult work situations, bad church situations, issues with friends or, or family not walking with God. Um, Father, we pray for those with sicknesses, um, God, that you would help strengthen and encourage those believers, um, who are dealing with that. And God, we also pray for those who have friends who are unsaved or who trust in false gospels and have a, have a false assurance of salvation because of something they heard and, and chose to believe in God. We pray that you would help bring the light to their life so that they could see that there's only one way to salvation, and that's through your son, Jesus. So, Father, we thank you again for this day, just the opportunity we have to read your word, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I Again, as I did last week, I had so much fun uh, studying for this. I'm looking forward to to the next lesson, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, please leave any comments below, any any thoughts you had, um, any questions, please leave those below. Um, if I would love to pray for you, if you go below in the description below, there's the link and it's just a little four question survey monkey. You can submit requests anonymously. Um, you can even put your name and put the, uh, you can put the request as anonymous as well. Um, but if you just see where the prayer request links is, it's just a survey monkey, real easy to do. I'd love to pray for you guys um, if you'd like to do that. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care.